Welcome to Film Riot, you beautiful people. Writing is a beast of a task to tackle, and a lot of us are constantly scouring the internet in search of information to pack into our brains to try to get better. And it just so happens that our good friend Seth Worley has two separate classes on our store, Writing 101 and Writing 201. And since next week is Black Friday and everything on our store is gonna be 75% off, we're basically gonna be giving this class away, so we figured why not give a piece of it away right now? And then if you like it, you can come back and get 201 for basically free. I mean, not actually free, but pretty freaking close to it. So if you dig it, make sure you come back on Black Friday, but now I'm gonna shut up and let Seth talk about writing characters. There's no one way to conceive a baby. Take that back, I guess generally there's one main way, but like what I mean is that there's no one way to get someone to take to make that baby with you. Anyone promising you a surefire never fails method to convincing someone to start making babies with you is full of lies, gross, and probably a criminal. The same goes for developing characters. Before we dive into structure and the process of breaking a story, I wanted to spend a little bit of time talking about characters and where to find them. They're tricky creatures because technically you're the writer, so at the end of the day, you're telling them what to be. But when things are really working, it definitely feels like the other way around. And you want that. You want living, breathing characters making decisions for themselves and telling you what to write for them. All right, so I have a few thousand different attack methods for developing characters, and a lot of them are frivolous and dumb, like names. I love names. I will waste an entire day on a name. I love baby name websites. I literally will scroll that nonsense for hours looking for the perfect first name. And names, when they're right, are like music. Vito Corleone, Scarlett O'Hara, Norman Bates, Indiana Jones, Ellen Ripley. So what's great about names is that a lot of them mean stuff. So if you want to say something about who your character is or what they stand for, you can assign them a name with meaning. Jack Shepard, Darth Vader, Remus Lupin, Frodo Baggins. These all have words in them that mean things. So that's always fun. Just be careful because you could literally spend weeks perfecting a name, but often it's worth it. Another thing you can do is just copy yourself. It sounds lazy, but it's okay to write a character that carries all the same beliefs, instincts, and baggage as you, just as long as you actually bring those beliefs, instincts, and baggage to the table. Because writing is a lot like acting. You're not working with bricks, you're working with emotions. So it requires you to expose yourself and make yourself vulnerable in ways that bricklaying does not. No offense to bricklayers. Man, you guys are an emotional bunch. But I'm boring, you say. I'm the most boring person in the world. I'm too boring to be a movie character. You know what? Luke Skywalker is one of those boring people ever imagined. I mean, he's definitely not as interesting as Princess Leia or Han Solo or friggin' Darth Vader. Heroes are often the most boring characters in the movie, so that's okay if you're boring. So, maybe that's your hero, a boring person. You, if you relate to them, surely someone else will, especially if, like I said, you commit to it emotionally. You can also try writing someone who is the opposite of you. Someone who would clash with literally everything you stand for. I remember reading where Joss Whedon was saying how Malcolm Reynolds, the hero of Firefly and Serenity, uh, was someone he would probably not get along with in real life. Like, who would that person be for you? It doesn't have to be elevated or evil. It can just be someone who would push all of your buttons and make progress extremely difficult for the both of you. Don't just write their surface. Figure out what would make them tick. Uh, like, don't write a character whose actions you can't justify or empathize with. And honestly, this is probably an exercise you should just be practicing in general anyway, as a person, empathy. So you can write yourself, you can write your own worst enemy, or even better, you can write both. You need contrast for a story to be interesting. So write characters who contrast each other, then put them in a room together. Force them to order a pizza for them to share. Seriously. Hi, I'm Seth. I'm pretty great. I like pepperoni pizza, but I can go with cheese too. If you're feeling crazy, I can even do barbecue chicken pizza. What about you? I'm evil, Seth. I'm good with whatever. No preference. No, no seriously, is there a kind you'd like? Whatever you want. Dude, there's no judgment here. I actually would like you to suggest something. I mean, if we got Hawaiian, I wouldn't turn it down. Awesome. You cool with half Hawaiian, half pepperoni? Excellent. I mean, if it's easier, just do all pepperoni. I'm totally cool with that. I mean, they just cut it down the middle. It's really very I know, normal. but I'm saying, if it were too much trouble, we could just do pepperoni. No trouble. Great. Great. But I mean, if it is... Oh my God, Seth, for real. Another thing to keep in mind is that heroes change and villains don't. That's often inherently what makes the villain the bad guy, their unwillingness to change. Like, ironically, evil Seth is so hell-bent on being flexible that he's unwilling to let there be any kind of compromise. Whereas normal Seth is genuinely trying to find a common ground where they can both be happy. Do they actually cut it? I don't think no, they cut they it. No, they don't. It's just divided. But you said cut it, like down the middle. It was the wrong word. I used the wrong word. I feel like that would, by definition, be more work than usual. It's not the situation. They're not cutting it. I'm just saying, if that was the case, we could just do pepperoni overall. Oh my god, no. It's not. 
By the way, this is how I recommend you to find your characters. Not by filling out surveys for them, like what their favorite food is, or the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to them. I mean, maybe that helps you. Generally, it usually wastes my time. The best way I think to find your characters' voices is by writing them. Put them in conflict, write your way out of that conflict, and you'll find their voices in the process. You know, I may not even eat any pizza. I'm not super hungry. Why, why, why? I'm not super hungry. Yeah, yes, you are. I'm really not. We're the same person said that's impossible to lie to me. I don't want you to be unhappy. I'm not going to be unhappy getting half a pizza I like and half a but pizza you like. you're upset though. By this, by this con conversation. Are you serious? I told not you, you should this? order what you want. I'll be totally fine. We're going to die here. We're literally going to starve no, to no, death. You don't need to starve to death. I'll starve no, to no, death. No, 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 no. Seriously, I don't mind. We're both starving to death. Then I'm coming back as a ghost so I can haunt the shit out of you. I mean, we'd both be ghosts. I don't think ghosts haunt other ghosts. Please, keep telling me the rules of ghosts. All right, your homework, come up with two characters and give them names. Then write a three-page scene of those two characters in conflict. Domain.com has all your website needs, including .com and .net domain names and intuitive website builders, so you can take the first steps in creating an identity really, online. if you think about it, it's kind of like a police department. Okay, interested. Where's this going? I don't know. That's... The one time I actually want to hear where you're going Protect with it. Protect and serve! It, you know? That's just lazy. They're affordable, reliable, and have all the tools that you need to start building a website and sharing your ideas <laughs> with the world on a professional web. <laughs> it's a siren. It's a siren or you're just hyping it up. You my hype man. <laughs> now Domain Extension is going to help you tell your story like a .com and .net domain name. And if you want to brand yourself online, Domain.com is over 300 domain name extensions to fit your needs from .club to .space. Nothing. No, you're doing a good job. The guys at Domain.com want to show you some love by giving you 15% off their already affordable prices. When you get, get the down, oh my get God! <laughs> domain names, web hosting, email, shoes code, coupon code, film right at Domain.com's checkout. And when you think domain names, think Domain.com. Oh, I'm gonna sit down. I was reenacting a raid. Yeah, I can see that. Logo. So if you dug this episode, make sure to check out our store on Black Friday, Writing 201, and everything else in the store is going to be 75% off all day. So, you know, come on over and rob us blind. But that's it, and I'll see you guys next time when I smack a phoenix and disappear into the ether.